Today we are celebrating this Mass on the feast day of St. John Vianney. And as we do so, we're also having a healing Mass, praying for healing in our families. And so we're asking St. John Vianney in a particular way to intercede for us and to bring about healing in our families. Um, if you have the handout that we tried to give you, um, you're going to see there that um, when it comes to healing, um, especially healing of um, inner wounds or healing of our hearts, um, healing of our past, healing of our memories, healing of our families. And um, when it comes to this, um, there's a, an approach to healing that I'm proposing. Um, I've been doing this now for about a year as we talk about this at these healing masses. And as you see in the, at the top there, there's a three-stage approach. Um, there's pre-healing, there's healing, and there's post-healing. And the pre-healing is overcoming denial, um, opening your heart and mind to the possibility of healing, and placing your faith in God. Um, in order to really have any kind of healing, um, you have to do those, those steps. Um, I've already talked about those in previous healing masses. Um, and then you can move into the more of the healing stage. I mean, in the healing stage, you need to extend mercy and forgiveness um, to those who have hurt you and to yourself. Um, if you do this, um, then the door to healing opens. And once you've done that, um, there's also a need to seek freedom um, from anything that's holding you back. Um, any evil spirit, any emotional bondage, any lie, um, anything and anyone, really, if that's holding you back, um, you have to surrender that to God and let him take it, take it away and free you of that. And then you're in a place to really receive healing. And today that's what we're going to talk about here in just a moment. Um, once you receive healing, um, then you can integrate the healing into your life and you can get to a place where you experience new life. And then you're able, in the post-healing, um, to share your story with others, to walk with others, to pray with others, and to grow in virtue. Um, when it comes to healing, there's lots of different kinds of healing. I'm probably going to spend a few healing masses talking about different kinds of healing. Um, today, what I want to talk with you about is generational healing. And when we think about our families, um, I just had a chance to spend time with my family. Um, I'm the oldest of seven children. I have four brothers, two sisters. Um, I'm not perfect. My brothers and sisters aren't perfect. My family is not perfect. Um, none of us have perfect families. Um, most of us have quite a bit of brokenness in our families. And the good news with that is, is that God wants to heal us. Um, he wants to bring healing to our families. And part of the, the challenge that we have is um, that things are being passed down. Um, the Bible talks about um, either curses being passed down or blessings being, being passed down. Um, if you look on your sheet here, um, Exodus chapter 20, um, God is saying through, through Moses, For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. And so um, if we sin in major ways, um, it has an effect on us. It has a consequence. Um, it also has an effect on our children and potentially even our children's children. Um, we see this um, clearly um, with things like um, cancer being passed on generation to generation. And we see it with things like um, alcoholism being passed on to generation to generation. And sadly, we see it with abuse, too. Um, if abuse is in your family, um, until it gets rooted out, it often gets passed on um, from generation to generation. Um, the good news is, of course, that God wants to bless us. Um, he doesn't want these curses to have such an effect on us. I mean, he wants to bless us to the thousandth generation. And so we need to put ourselves in a our place to receive that blessing. And what God really desires is to pour out his mercy, um, his forgiveness, his healing 
um, backwards um, to our, um, those who have gone before us and those who have committed major sins and those who have done horrible things sometimes. And we can pray for that. And today we are praying for that. And he then wants to extend his blessing forward. Um, whatever things have been passed on to us, we're praying today that those things would stop um, right here and right now, and that from now on, going forward, um, God would be able to pour out his blessing into our lives, into our children's lives, into our children's children's lives. And, you know, when you think about this idea, um, we are familiar with this. Um, there's something called original sin. Um, original sin is the, the first sin of Adam and Eve. Um, and Adam and Eve, their con the consequence of that sin still affects us today. Um, baptism um, helps to heal the effect of original sin. So we see it right there. Um, we see it, you know, in our reading today um, from Exodus, um, where God is, is saying um, that he's going to pour out blessing um, through Abraham, um, through Moses, um, to the chosen people. Um, for generations. He says, I will make your de descendants as numerous as the stars and the sky and all this land that I promised. I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. And, and so um, God wants to, to bless us. And we want to be in a place to receive um, that blessing. And the reality is that these curses... Um, Jesus has broken the big curse. Um, the big curse is, is sin itself and the effect of sin. Jesus took that sin upon himself. Um, he went to the cross for us. Um, he died for us. And by doing so, um, he broke the curse. And so we can thank him and praise him today for, for doing that. And we are praying um, that the same sacrifice that he made for us on the cross would also be poured out um, into our families and um, that we would receive mercy and forgiveness for our sins and the sins of those who have gone before us and that we would um, receive um, generational healing and um, if you have a sheet and you turn it over um, there's a couple things that help us um, with generational healing, there's probably lots of things, but the things I want to mention today, um, the number one way to seek generational healing is to offer a Mass for that intention. Whether it's asking a priest to offer a Mass for that intention, or um, whether it's um, offering that intention when you go to Mass, because you can have a ma an intention when you go to Mass. There are lots of other things we can do. We can um, fast. We can offer a fast intentionally for the healing of our families. And we can ask for the intercession of the angels and the saints. And we're doing that um, today as well. Um, especially on this feast day of um, St. John Vianney. Um, St. John Vianney is the patron saint of parish priests. He um, heard thousands and thousands and thousands of confessions. He would hear a confession um, for 11 to 12 hours a day um, in the wintertime, 16 hours a day in the summertime. That seems unbelievable, but it's believable because it's written down many, many times. It did happen, and for many years he did that. And many wonderful things came through that and because many wonderful things come um, through the sacrament of confession and reconciliation. And so we're asking his um, prayers today. And you'll also notice that there's a generational healing prayer on this sheet. After communion, I'm going to pray this prayer on our behalf, um, but you can take this sheet home and you can continue to pray it. And maybe you would pray it before you go to Mass. Maybe we pray it after you go to Mass. Um, it's a powerful prayer that includes um, a number of ways in which we're asking God 
um, to bring healing to our families. On this special feast day of St. John Vianney, um, remember, we remember his great love um, for the sacraments and um, for the Eucharist and um, for confession, his great love um, for Jesus, for God the Father, and for the Holy Spirit. And he has a, a quote here, it's really a prayer um, that I'm just going to conclude with. And I encourage you um, to just receive this in your hearts. I love you, oh my God, and my only desire is to love you until the last breath of my life. I love you, oh my infinitely lovable God, and I would rather die loving you than live without loving you. I love you, Lord, and the only grace I ask is to love you eternally. My God, if my tongue cannot say it in every moment that I love you, I want my heart to repeat it to you as often as I draw breath. And so we do love you, Lord God, we love you. And Jesus, Holy Spirit, uh, we come before you this day um, praying um, for generational healing, that your love, your mercy um, would be extended um, to those in our families who are in need of your mercy, and that your blessing would be extended forward. And we pray this through the intercession of St. John Vianney, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.